Good afternoon, this is Derek Chamblay broadcasting from Chamblay, Atlanta, the next great American city, Battleground Zero, the epicenter of the 2017 Civil Defense of the United States of America. Oh, it's a clouded up, uh, windy day here in Chamblay, Atlanta. It's winding up on 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Friday. July 28th, 2017, following Trump path and the breaking news, of course, of uh, that stunning vote uh, that failed in the Senate. And uh, we're going to pick up a story uh, from The Hill, uh, thehill.com, uh, headline, ex cruise aide, Trump presidency, quote, is effectively over, unquote by Joe Concha, uh, and uh, at any rate, a uh, picture uh, of uh, coming off of uh, MSNBC uh, with a breaking news headline, Senate GOP effort to repeal Obamacare fails. All right, so we're going to take the, take the article from the top. Um, it's definitely an opinion that uh, the Trump presidency is effectively over. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely an opinion. And it's coming from an ex-aide to a U.S. senator from Texas, Ted Cruz. And uh, in, in the, the body of the article, of course, uh, uh, it's, uh, his name is Rick Tyler. And uh, he was fired during the campaign in February of 2016. He was fired from the uh, Ted Cruz campaign for the Republican nomination, um, allegedly for circulating a, a false story or something, dirty trick on uh, a senator from Florida, Marco Rubio's campaign. So we'll pick it up from the top. Senator Ted Cruz's Republican Texas former communications director declared that the presidency of Donald Trump, quote, is effectively over, unquote, on MSNBC on Friday. Quote, I think this presidency is effectively over, unquote. Rick Tyler told Morning Joe co-host uh, Mike uh, Brzezinski, uh, quote, and if you look back to different presidencies, you look at Bill Clinton, he had a rough first two years, very difficult two years, but after Oklahoma City, he was able to regain his footing and become presidential until he slipped on a blue dress, unquote. Tyler continued, referring to the 1995 bombing of a federal building. We want to stop right there. We want to stop right there, because this whole thing of, of looking presidential you know, uh, candidate Donald Trump said at one point, yeah, I can, you know, I can act presidential, but, uh, I, you know, people have to understand his, his, his particular, uh, his particular mission is to uh, reorganize the government, straighten out uh, Washington, uh, straighten out uh, a government that is, is very entrenched, uh, and, and, and really, instead of, instead of putting the, the particular uh, 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 blame on our current president, Donald Trump, who's only been in for six months, really the blame should should turn to Congress. It should turn to the House, and it should turn to the Senate, and, and their particular approval ratings are lower than, than, and they've been lower, consistently lower, than our current president, Donald Trump. So uh, this this whole thing of, of, well, when are you presidential? When are you presidential? And, and you know, it, it seems like the only time uh, that that uh, across the board they said that our current president is presidential is when he when he uh, 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 fired the the 59 cruise missiles in in Syria and and uh, oh now he's presidential well he you know he he bombed he he bombed some some people uh, 
uh, oh my, you know, George W. Bush uh, was really having a, 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 a tough time with his new presidency after uh, coming through the Florida recount in, in 2000 when his brother was governor of Florida. And it was, it was very apparent that as governor of Florida, Jeb Bush fixed the election there in Florida for his brother, uh, governor of Texas, George W. Bush, to rise to, to the presidency. And he seized power and, 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 and forced the whole thing through. And uh, we had Roger Stone down there in Miami uh, agitating and whatnot to disrupt the recount and whatnot. Uh, anyway, uh, Roger Stone is an operative outside of our current president, uh, Donald Trump, and his rise to power and, and, and Donald Trump's path to victory. Okay, so, yeah, uh, acting presidential, acting presidential. And George W. Bush's uh, uh, presidency was suffering until the towers came down in New York City, until 9-11, and he was already prepared to take over pushing through the Patriot Act. He had ordered his departments to get ready uh, and, and basically draft the foundation or the basics of the Patriot Act and have it ready by September 10th. Why? Because he knew full well the movements of the pilots through South Florida. He knew full well that uh, their mission was to uh, uh, hijack some planes and, 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 and bring down the towers. It was, it was planned all along. Uh, and, and his brother at the time was, was governor of, of Florida and, and even made uh, arrangements uh, that they, they would uh, train an airfield south of Tampa and, and, and learn to be commercial pilots. And, and their movements throughout the city of Tampa over and over were uh, omitted by, by the FBI director, Robert Mueller, from the 9-11 commissioners. Okay, now... Uh, we're going to fast forward to 2017. We'll continue with this article. Oh, my. And, oh, uh, well, we'll you know, back up a little bit and, and talk about our current president, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, it, it, they said, yo, he's not a politician. He's not a politician. Okay, he's a businessman. He's a businessman. He's going to run the government like a, like a, a CEO, a CEO. And, and, and what this is, it's a hostile takeover. It's a hostile takeover of the Republican Party. It's a hostile takeover of the government. And sometimes when you when you do a hostile takeover of a company, you got to break it up. you got to break it up and sell it off piece by piece and reorganize it. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. So we're going to continue with this article from The Hill. Oh, my. Quote, but this president cannot change. Nothing about his behavior tells me since the beginning of this process that he was going to change. This is still Rick Tyler, a former, former uh, communications director of, of Senator Ted Cruz, uh, who is said he's, he's running for re-election in 2018 uh, to the Senate from uh, the U.S. Senate from Texas. He's running for re-election. Ted Cruz, oh really? We know he wants to be president. He wants to be president, and he made a great deal with, with uh, President Donald Trump, candidate Donald Trump, just before the convention. Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, and, and led by Jeb Bush, and uh, 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 John Kasich, you know, opted out, but uh, they had Scott Walker, the, the governor of Wisconsin, and and they had all along Rick Scott, uh, a Trump supporter, the governor of Florida, and and, and uh, Lindsey Graham was part of the, 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 the crowd, and they made a great deal with candidate Donald Trump. He gets the nomination, they get their GOP agenda. And all the president is saying is, is you went on and on and on about Obamacare. You went on and on and on about repealing Obamacare, and, and, and now that it's time to do something, you need to get the votes even if you need even if you, you you need to get some democrats to vote with you you need you need to broaden out and and really solve this thing you know and and get to work get to work and put together a new health care uh, uh plan that 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 makes sense to at least several democrats and then i'll sign it and then i'll put the trump brand on it if you can't do that, you need to go back to the drawing board. And if, and if the majority leader from Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, 
can, cannot count votes. Don't even take the vote. Don't even take the vote. In March, uh, our current president, Donald Trump, called the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, he's, and he said, hey, you know, pull it, pull it. Don't even take it to a vote. He didn't, you know, don't even take it to a vote. All right, so this is the backdrop. This is a backdrop drop of the whole thing. It's a hostile takeover of the Republican Party, and, and early on they said, hey, you know, if uh, candidate Donald Trump was committed to uh, supporting whoever, the, the, the convention, whoever, the, the Republican Party uh, uh, backed in the nomination, and he signed on to that, but oh no, you know, all of, all of the candidates signed on to it, oh, but oh no, at, you know, at the last minute, Jeb Bush said, hey, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to endorse him, and I'm, I'm not going to support him. And that was fake. That was fake because he sent he sent his 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 brother Marvin Bush to help the uh, Ted Cruz campaign. And behind the scenes, he marshaled a, a number of meetings. Uh, uh, Jeb Bush and 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 uh, candidate Donald Trump said ultimately Jeb Bush will endorse me, but he insulted the Bush family to the point where Jeb Bush uh, just uh, really. Uh, uh, lost control over his master plan. He never wanted the presidency. He wanted the U.S. Senate seat uh, of Marco Rubio from Florida, and he was he, he said over and over, even quoted in the Tampa Bay Times, the St. Petersburg Tampa Bay Times, that whoever finished first between between Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio in Florida, he if if Marco Rubio finished ahead of him in Florida, in, in uh, excuse me in Iowa in Iowa. The first of February, if 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 Marco Rubio finished ahead of Jeb Bush in 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 Iowa, Jeb Bush would throw all of his money, his PAC committee, his donors, all of his money and his endorse, endorsement behind Marco Rubio, and run for Marco Rubio's vacated U.S. Senate seat. That was the plan until Donald Trump appeared on the horizon. And by the time Jeb Bush exited the race after the New Hampshire uh, primary, when he had a very poor showing, it was too late to get him off the ballot for the March 15th Florida winner-take-all 99 delegates March 15th Florida primary that Donald Trump won. And from that point on, from March 15th on, Donald Trump, candidate Donald, Donald Trump was unstoppable. And the anti-Trump Republicans that were the Never Clinton uh, Republicans and became Never Trump made a great deal with Donald Trump before the convention. They get their agendas. He gets the nomination. And they told him at that time they had ways. They had ways. Leaks, hackers, dirty tricks, manipulation of voter data back basis to fix the election, to rig it, and he didn't want to know the details, but they, they proceeded to flip votes in Florida and Wisconsin that gave those two states in the Electoral College to our, our current president, Donald Trump, and without those two states, Florida and Wisconsin, H. Clinton would have won a narrow victory in the Electoral College. Okay, now fast forward to 2017. <laughs> He's saying, this president cannot change. Nothing about his behavior tells me since the beginning of this process that he's going to change. Okay, you know, really. You know, how about, how about uh, the senators? How about the congressmen, Congress people? Are they ever going to change? Are, are we ever going to get to the point where, where uh, this vote is divided and, and we, can't, we can't get Democrats to vote with Republicans? That's a failure in the House. That's a failure in the Senate. That's what it is. All right, very interesting. Uh, I'm not going to continue much longer with this, with this article, but at the very end of the article, very interesting that Senator, Republican Senator, U.S. Senator John McCain out of Arizona came out of the hospital to make this vote, and we know that uh, our current President Donald Trump was saying, we need your vote, we need your vote, and, and in the past we know he said, you know, uh, John McCain has is, is lost so much, he's basically high. How can a loser ever win? Well, guess what? Senator John McCain voted against it. This is Derek Chamblay winding up on 1 o'clock in the afternoon. A cloudy day, maybe it'll rain here in Chamblay, Atlanta. It's Friday.
July 28th, 2017. Cy Radio Cyber Citizen Network. Thank you very much.